Welcome back my friends. In this video I'm showing you how to create such a scatter plot where instead of a traditional color legend we use colored words and symbols in the title instead. That's a pretty good strategy to give your data more room instead of wasting it on a huge legend. I've created a similar video that shows you how to create the same chart without the extra symbols. You see in that plot everything was circles. Pretty boring and frankly a bit unsafe. It is always a good idea to double code that is use different colors and symbols to distinguish between groups so that people who don't do colors so well can follow along. In this video I show you how to make that happen. So enough chit chat, let's go! The first thing we want to do is to recreate a chart that doesn't do any double coding at all but only uses colored points with colored words in the title. What we need for that is of course a data set. Here let's just use our favorite penguins data, filter out missing values and save it into a new variable. And then we can get a couple of colors that we want to use. Here I use colors from the colorblind friendly Okabe Ito color palette. Notice that I named the color vector so that we always make sure that all elderly penguins get this color all Gen 2 penguins will get this color and all Chinstra penguins, well, you get the idea. Then we are ready to build the plot. So we take our data set, pass it to ggplot, where we specify that x corresponds to the build length, y to the body mass, and the fill color will be mapped to the species. And then we can throw in a gm point layer to get our first scatter plot. Now look at this crap. It's all black and white, even though we want to use colors. That's what you get when you specify the fill and not the color aesthetic without using a point shape that can actually have a fill color. Therefore, let us set the shape to 21, which is magic code for fill points. Cool. This still doesn't look like much. So let's make the points larger so that we can actually see something. And we should probably make them a little bit transparent. Otherwise, we can't see a dang thing with all the overlapping stuff. I think it's kind of cool when the points have a nice outline, even if they are transparent. So I'm going to set the color of the points too. Nothing you can do about it to stop me. All right, this looks better now. But we should also make our theme a little bit more minimalistic. That's how I like it. And in that theme layer, we're also going to increase the font size and change the font family so that we have a nicer look. And then we are going to use our pretty colors that we specified earlier by scale fill manual where we set the values to our colors vector. Again, since the vector was named, I hope you remember that, we can be sure that the colors are always used like we want them to. Next, let us add better labels. That's important, otherwise everyone will know squat about what's going on in this chart. So, for the x-axis we'll use bill length in millimeters. On the y-axis we actually won't use a label. Instead, we're going to continue with the title and then in the subtitle we're going to use a variable called title text. And in this variable we're going to throw in the information about what's on the y-axis and what the colors mean. Right now, we will just fill this variable with a generic text. Don't worry about it. We will add that stuff later on to get the species name and the colors in there. For now though, we have to prepare the theme of our plot so that we can actually use colors in our plots subtitle. So this is why we format the plot subtitle to element markdown, which comes from the GG text package. This won't change that much yet because we haven't added the color instructions yet. But the crucial step is still to add element markdown because it allows for color instructions in our variable title text. And while we are working on the theme, let us also make some changes to make the plot nicer. These are just a lot of small changes, but they add up to make the plot look nice. So let's go through them rapidly. You're ready? So we move the plot title to the left, make the text color lighter, do the same thing for the access text, make the block title actually larger than the subtitle, use a different font family in the title as an eye-catching element, add a small border around the panel, make the grid lines a little bit lighter, remove a couple of grid lines, and finally we are going to remove the legend. Oof, that's a lot of changes in a short amount of time. Hope you're happy with the results. In any case, we remove the legend since we want to have that information in our subtitle. For now though, let us comment out this specific line so that we can make sure that our text uses the correct colors in the end. Once we're sure about that, we can uncomment that line again. All right, now that all the theme stuff is done, we are ready to change our title text variable. As a first step, let us throw in the species name. So we're going to add Adderley, Chinstrap and Gen2. I put everything here on a new line, but Glue will actually connect everything. But I did this to make sure that our code is more legible because we're going to add a lot more stuff in there. And it's good if it's on the separate lines then. Finally, we are getting rid of those dots as we don't need them anymore. And we're going to add the comma that is missing. Cool. So now we have our species name in there. Notice that these are bold because we have used markdown notation that makes the text bold. And don't forget that we have just now enabled markdown notation in our plot subtitle. This is why this rendering is bold. Now in markdown, we can also use HTML code. 
which means that we can use so-called span tags that create inline text. This is useful because we can now wrap our species names into span tags in which we change the style by setting the color style to a specific hex code. Here we extract the hex code using the glue syntax to access our colors vector and from there we grab the color that is associated with Adelie. Again, and I'm sure you haven't forgotten about this, but still let me mention it. This works because we have named the entries in our vector so that we can access the color via its name. And of course, we actually have to wrap our species names into span tags, which means that we also need to add the closing span tag. And if we execute this, we can see now that our word is highlighted and uses the correct color. Therefore, we can do the exact same thing for the other species. Basically, that's just a bit of copy and pasting and replacing the species name with the other species name. And then we have the color that we want. And now that we see that the mapping from color to species is correct in the subtitle, we can also remove the legend. Okay, so this was step one. Time to use double coding now, that is we use different symbols for each species. To make this happen, I will get icons from the Font Awesome website. So let's just go to the Font Awesome page where we can look for different symbols that we may want to use. For example, we could use this circle icon. And I also want to use the square icon. And I also want to use the star icon. Thankfully, all of these icons are free. So you just have to go to the download page and then download the icon files from there. Once you downloaded that on your computer, you just have to unzip that file and install the OTF file. Basically, just double click on these files and press install. I'm using Linux, but it's pretty much the same on Windows. So now that you have the icons and you know which ones we want to use, let's create the symbols vector with the icon names square, circle and star. Just like before, let's also name this vector. Now to use icons instead of points, we're actually going to use GM text instead of GM point. But what I need for this to work is to take my penguins data set and get this new symbol information into another column of this data set. So we're just going to use mutate and in there we're going to add another column which I call symbol and then we extract the correct symbol from the symbols vector using the species names that we have here. So this will give us a new symbols column. Let's just put in a select call to check that the symbols and the species are matched correctly. Let's compare this to our symbols vector. Through careful inspections, we can now see that Gen 2 was assigned the star icon, but actually we wanted to use the circle icon. That's not right. And the reason why this happening is really annoying and actually it confused me a bit when I was implementing this. You will have to watch out here because this species column is a factor variable. And therefore, behind the scenes, it is encoded as the numbers 1, 2, 3 and not as the actual species labels. This is why this code here used numbers instead of the actual labels to access the vector. And we don't want that. That's That was the point of why we added names to that vector. So to make sure that everything works like we wanted to, we're going to throw in an as character call. And then if we compare these two things carefully again, we can see that it's finally right. Perfect. So now that we have this new column and it works correctly, we can actually replace GM point by GM text. And this means that we actually can get rid of most of the things that we've specified in GM point earlier. But we have to assign a label aesthetic now. And of course, this will come from this new symbol column. All right, so this doesn't look like what we want. First off, notice that everything is black again and not actually colored. So we have to change the fill to color because text labels don't have fill, they only have color. So now that we have colored words, that's great but we also want to use the correct colors. So we have to also change the scale fill to scale color manual. Very nice. Time to add the most important part. To actually use the symbols from the font awesome font family, we have to specify that font family. And then it works. We get the symbols in our plot. Hooray! Hi there, sorry to drop in like this. After recording, I noticed that I forgot to mention one important thing. Symbol output like this can be a pain if you don't have the right tools set up. Believe me, I've been there. So if you're having trouble with this symbol output for all of this to work nicely, the easiest way is to install the rack package. And if you have it installed, go to global options and under graphics, use AGG as your backend. This will make sure that the fonts are rendered okay. I hope this will help you to avoid some painful debugging. Speaking about helping, let me remind you to help me out by hitting that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot and now back to the video. At this point, you're probably wondering, that's all nice and dandy, but how do I even find this oddly specific font name? How do I know that I need to use that? So let me show you how this can be done. To do so, I will just add in another code chunk in between our previous code chunks so that we can see what's going on. In that code chunk, we're going to call the system fonts function from the system fonts package. And this will give you information on all the fonts that are installed on your system. Stuff like the path where your fonts are located, the names, the family name, and the style and so on. So to figure out the correct family name, what you probably want to do is to simply filter this data set and look for a string 
in this family column that uses the word awesome. And now to actually read something, let's just select the columns that are possibly of interest, say path, name, family, and style. Uh, maybe not the path, but remember that this information is in there. We will need it later. So here we can see that the family name is font awesome 63. Basically, that's how I knew that I needed to insert this into GM text. The question now becomes, how do I actually use this solid style? Clearly, I don't want to have only outlines for my icons in the plot. I want to have solid squares, circles, and stars. And it is a shame that ggplot asks for what is in this family column here and not for what is in the name column. Because in this name column, we can actually see that it differentiates between the regular style, which we have in our plot now, and the solid style that we want. The family column just lists the same thing for both cases, which is kind of dumb. But I guess we just have to live with that. Let me show you how to work around this. The workaround is to take this row that you want to use, and from there, assign this font family to a new name. So that's why we filter our system fonts output for solid styles. And since we know that our original data set shows us where the file for this font is located, we can pull that path and this will give you the location of the solid font file. Then we can pass this path to the system fonts package to register a new font. In there, we can specify a new name. So let's borrow the name that we already use anyway and add a solid to that. And finally, we have to assign the path that we extracted to the plane argument. If you are unfamiliar with R's built-in pipe, this is the placeholder variable that you need to use when you want to pull a stunt like this. And now once this is executed, the font is registered via this new name. So we can add this new name to our plot and it looks like what we want it to. Well, maybe we can make the symbols a bit smaller and a bit transparent, but then it looks quite nice. So we are almost done. We have our symbols in the plot, time to get them into the title as well. As you probably guessed, we need to get this into the title text variable. To do so, let's just make a little bit of room in the glue function and just work on the first species. It doesn't actually matter for the code execution if there's white space in there, but this makes our code a little bit more legible. Again, we're going to throw a lot of stuff in there so we can use as much space in there as we can get. The first thing I want to do here is to stretch everything out a little bit and make what we have so far a bit nicer to read because we need to nest more span text. So let's just put everything onto new separate lines. Then we can also add open and close parentheses to this so that we can throw in a symbol between these two open and close parentheses. To get the symbol in there, we use the glue function syntax again to extract the correct symbol for our species from the symbols vector. This will extract this word square from our vector. That's something, I guess, but not really what we're going for, is it? So let's actually render this word using the font awesome font family that we just registered earlier. And just like with the colors information, to get information on the font family into this text, we have to use span tags. So we add an opening span tag, a closing span tag, and then we can specify the style directions again. And in there, we want to specify that the font family is supposed to be this font awesome six free solid. And because our font has multiple words, we need to enclose the whole thing with these back ticks, but that messes with our R code, so we actually have to escape these ticks by using a backslash. Whoa, ho, ho, it worked. We now have our square in the title. Let's change the size a little bit to make it smaller so that it looks nicer in our parentheses. All right, let me know that this is not the prettiest code in the world. It's just always a pain to work with these types of things in glue. There are a couple of helpful functions that can help you with that. But most of the time, I feel like they are not worth the additional effort of just throwing the stuff together like we did. Anyway, once you have that, you can just copy and paste everything and change the name to Chinstrap. This will give us the star in the title. And then we can do the same thing with the last species and replace Chinstrap with Gen2 everywhere. And then we have the colored circle in there too. But we actually have one comma too much, so let's remove that. Now, to make this a bit nicer to look at, let's add a bit of room in front of the open parentheses. And also, if you're not a fan of the Oxford comma, then you can remove that comma here as well. The choice is yours. In any case, look at the cool stuff we built here. We have used double coding to make sure that everyone can read our chart nicely, even if they can't see colors that well. And we avoided making a huge legend for this. That's a pretty huge win in my book, if you ask me. Now, if you want to learn more about ggplot, check out this video next, where I show you how to create bump charts, which are great for rankings over time. And if ggplot is not your thing, check out this video, where I show you a foolproof strategy to style your quarter documents. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.